and welcome to another edition of House of Wisdom Knife Reviews. And today I have a special treat for you. We're going to be looking at the Tashi Barusha Rowdy. It is a super knife and it's produced by Jerry McGinnis, designed by Tashi Barusha. Tashi is a graphic designer that lives in France. And he doesn't speak with a French accent, so I assume he's North American. The Rowdy is a mid-tech, or as they like to call, a high-tech, because it's made by Jerry McGinnis, who himself is a world-class knife maker. Tashi has many collaborations, and I'm going to flash up on the screen several of them for you, so that you can see them starting at the left and working to the right. There's the David Mosier Creep, the Jerry McGinnis Roadrunner, the Theory Savadan 24, the Brad Souther Aquaman W, the Greg Lightfoot Species, the Les George Chef, the Alan Aleshowitz Bones, the GTC Ice Water, the Peter Carey Saturday Nitro, the Brian Fellhofer Buffalo Hump, the David Mosier Creek, the Jen Zanso Vitamin A, and he also had a collaboration with Jen Zanso called the Vitamin B. I don't have a picture of it here. There are others I wanted to mention, too. With Andre Thorburn and Andre Van Heerden, he had one of the A2 series, the A6. And with Peter Recenti, he made a collaboration called the Polka. I also wanted to mention some of the entry-level production knife collaborations he's got. Riot makes the future. As of July 2017, it goes for $480. And the Custom Knife Factory has the muscle for $490 as of today. And the most affordable knife in the production realm, Barusha collaboration, is the Fox Knives Phoenix, which goes to GP Knives for only $360 as of July of 2017. This knife, the Rowdy, I purchased for $500 at Blade Show 2017 directly from Tashi Barusha. And it was wonderful getting to meet him and getting to know him. Um, Knife Center sells it for five seventy five. dollars Steel Addiction, whom Tashi has a special relationship with, sells it for only $450. And Steel Addiction, if you have any problems with your knife or it needs any repair, is the place that you send it to for it to be repaired or replaced. And Tashi really cares about the quality of the knives that go out and uh, he'll really take care of you, but it's done through Steel Addiction. The blade length on the knife is 3.5 inches, and it has that special Tashi Barusha aesthetic, as you see. The knife is broader than the handle, and the cutting edge falls below the line of the handle, and that makes it easy for slicing functions. That's a Tashi Barusha design aesthetic, have you seen with the other knives? The handle length is 4.625 inches, giving a total knife length of 8.125 inches. The weight of the knife in this configuration is 5 ounces even. This is the lightest of the several configurations that the knife is found in. I have some knives to show you for a comparison of size. First of all, we'll start with the Millet Max Evolution, which is a little larger than the Barusha Rowdy. We have the Viper Odino, which is a little smaller than the Rowdy. We have the Brian Nadal Mini Typhoon, which is about the same size as the Rowdy. We have the Strider Baby Huey which has a broad blade like the Rowdy, but is smaller in length. We have the Zero Tolerance 0562, which is around the same size as the Rowdy also. We have the Spyderco Para 3, which is smaller than the Rowdy. And lastly, we have the McGinnis Proline Mini Exo, which is also smaller than the Rowdy, but is made by the same person that manufactures the Rowdy. The blade is a stonewashed blade made of CPM 154 steel. The show side has the Tashi Barusha uh, maker's mark. 
and it has this Asian vibe to it. But as you can see, the main thing coming up is a T, and then there is a B with the arms of the B extending beyond the, the T, and then the D, which the arms of the D extend beyond the T, and it has this oval shape, and it's very large and prominent. But really, this is the only markings on the exterior of the blade. They have some markings on the interior of the blade. I don't know if you can catch that, but on the inside of the, the handle, it says Rowdy High Tech, and then the blade type steel, which is CPM 154. That's the only signage on the entire knife. So they did a really good job with that. The blade has a stone wash finish and is a high flat ground and has some chamfering on the end and there's no jimping on the proximal spine. The method of deployment is by flipper and it flips out amazingly well. The D10 is great. One of the things I wanted to point out about the flipper is that in its closed position, the knife handle and flipper make a continuous line. And then in the open position, the handle and the flipper make a continuous line. Toshi really made a good design choice and put some energy into making it look seamless. The um, handle is made of titanium and this is anodized blue. You can also get it in raw titanium which is silver colored and they have a bronze anodized version also. I'll put it down here. I'm going to show you the other handle styles. They, this is the five hole handle and I chose it because I like the way that the blade shows through so that you can see the blade and because of the five holes, it's also the lightest configuration of handle. But there are other configurations. There's one configuration that has one hole in the handle. And there is a configuration that has diamond-shaped texturing on the handle. And there's also one that has Toshi's Maker's Mark on the handle. The backspacer on the knife is made of black G10 and is held in place by two body screws. I just want to point out that uh, they're not held by body screws on both sides. One body screw transverses the G10, and then you see the, the end of the screw here on the clip side. Many makers uh, put screws on both sides. This is the Odino, for example, and uh, you can see the body screws are both on the uh, clip side and on the uh, show side of the scale. So that's just a design choice that Toshi made and hey, you go with what you you go with. The pivot of the knife uh, is just use a regular Torx bit to undo and it, is, it rides on bearings. The lock on the knife is a frame lock, I'll show you here, and one of McGinnis's distinctiveness is that he has a very wide space when he makes these uh, lock bars. I don't know if it's just the blade that he uses to cut them, but it's very wide in comparison to other knives. I'm going to show you the lock bar on the uh, Odino here. You can tell it's just a little thin lock bar cut as opposed to the broad one. And I'll use the uh, Zero Tolerance 056, 0562 also, as you can tell, it's just a little thin cut for the lock bar as opposed to the wide lock bar cut that the um, Tashi Barusha Rowdy has. The pocket clip is uh, a spring clip, nothing fancy. It has some uh, texturing and a special cutout for the lanyard hole. The lanyard hole is completely contained within the G10 backspacer, so it's completely uh, safe from being cut by your blade whenever the blade closes, by the way. Also on the lock bar, I want to point out that there is no lock bar insert or over travel stop, and McGinnis on his knives doesn't do that either. There are other makers like Greg Medford that didn't put uh, lock bar inserts on his knives either. Some of the Browse knives also don't have lock bar inserts. Uh, I tend to prefer lock bar inserts because you can carbonize the tip, but over time, sometimes the carbonization wears off and you can get some lock stick. I just want to say this knife has no lock stick whatsoever. It is perfectly dialed in. The ergonomics on the knife are great. 
it has uh, a cutout here for your first two fingers that's just the right size and then your other fingers have space to go here as you can tell for those of you who have big hands there's plenty of room on this handle for that I like it whenever the knife makers put a two uh, finger cutout rather than one finger cutout here is the Baby Huey by Strider and they do the same thing they have a, a two finger cutout and Strider actually extends the two finger cutout because he makes the blade contiguous uh, so that you have free people with large hands you can even go up there or you can slide down here Spider Co uh, has a one finger cutout uh, onto the blade so you can kind of choke up if you want to or choke down there but anyway I just like the two finger cutout idea and Tashi Barusha employs it and it really feels good ergonomically in your hand the action on this knife is nothing short of world-class. Look at this blade just fall on its own. Uh, the blade, because it is so oversized relative to the handle, uh, and because the action is on bearings and is very smooth, might I say, uh, just really, it returns. You don't even have to shake it. Gravity causes it to fall. This is one of the freest falling knives that I have. And we'll talk about the signage, uh, which I already have a little bit. The only signage on the show side, there's the Tashi Barusha insignia. And then on the inside, it mentions that it's a Rowdy High Tech and the steel type, which is CPM 154. So what are my impressions about the Tashi Barusha Rowdy? I absolutely love it. As a matter of fact, it's fallen into one of the top 10 favorite knives category that I'm going to do a video on soon. Are there opportunities for improvement? Maybe. Uh, the lock bar has no insert or over travel stop. And that's a design uh, choice, but I like all of my knives to have lock bar inserts and over travel stops just because I know the carbonization is eventually going to wear off and it may have problems later on. Right now, it's not causing any problems whatsoever. It, it has no lock stick at all. And the other thing I would like to comment on, it's okay if you don't secure the G10 backspacer with screws on both sides, but uh, because you have, as you can see there, the screw doesn't come all the way to the end of the blade handle, uh, this could have been hidden and covered, and you could have just drilled into it and tapped it without drilling all the way through, and that would have made the clip side of the knife left less cluttered. But what do I like about the knife? Oh my gosh, I like everything about it. Tashi Barusha's design skill with Jerry McGinnis's maker skill team up to be the perfect knife. And I just want to point out, when Jerry McGinnis hand makes his own knives, they all go for over $1,000. You can get his mid-text for under $1,000, but for some reason, he's willing to make Tashi Barusha's knives, and they come out for only $450. This is a great value. You get a Tashi Barusha knife for half the cost of his customs, and it's made by a custom knife maker, Jerry McGinnis. It is the way to enter, in a low-cost way, the world of Tashi Barusha. As I've mentioned before, there are some production makers, Riot Knives, Custom Knife Factory, and Fox Knives, that make sub-$600 knives for Tashi's design, but they're just production companies. You have the Jerry McGinnish touching this knife, crafting this knife, and putting it together. So my recommendation is, if you have $450 to blow on a knife, spend your money on this knife. Get it. It's a world-class knife designed by the Tashi Barusha, a world-class designer, and manufactured by Jerry McGinnis, the world-class custom maker. You will never be disappointed. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom Knife Review.